Hi friends, thanks for stopping by today to do another art project with me. Today we're going to do a drawing of the frog prints. And to do this project with me today, you're going to need a sheet of drawing paper. Copy paper would work just fine. You're going to need some crayons. Also make sure that you have a black crayon because that's what we're going to do our main drawing with. Then this next um, supply is optional, but I'm going to finish my drawing off by using some watercolor paints. And if you don't have the watercolor paints, you can just finish your drawing with some crayons or markers, or you could take some regular craft paint and water it down. Also, you are going to need a couple of small containers of water if you're using watercolors. As always, I have one bowl to keep my brush clean, and I have another bowl that I keep the water clean so that I can add it to my watercolors. And then, of course, you're going to need a brush. And then I'm using this little pipette to add water to my watercolors, but if you don't have one of these, you can just use a small spoon. And then later on, I might be mixing some of my watercolors. So I have a little palette here that I'm going to use. If you don't have one of these at home, you can just use a, a regular um, styrofoam plate or maybe a little bowl or something like that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. So you're going to need your black crayon. And the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to draw two circles for eyes. And we're gonna draw those kind of in the middle of our paper. So I'm gonna draw kind of the pupils right there and draw another one kind of close to it. And then we're just going to draw kind of larger circles around each one of those. Now I want my pupils to be a little larger, so I'm gonna go back and make them a little bigger. I want my frog prints to have these really big eyes. All right, next we're going to draw his front legs and we're going to go kind of underneath each eye and we're going to draw some kind of slanted lines straight down and then we're going to give him his webbed feet here do him three little webbed toes and do the same thing under the opposite eye All right, so now you should have his front legs together. Now we're going to add his, his body. And we're going to start on one side of the eye here. And we're gonna draw a circle. We're gonna come around down by his front legs. And I'm gonna skip this part right here. I'm gonna draw my circle in the middle and then come back to the other side of the up opposite leg and bring it back around to his eye right there. And I've got to connect right there in the middle between his two eyes. All right, there we have our main body of our frog. Well, he needs a couple more legs. So we're gonna add those on the side. And we're gonna start really by drawing a half heart shape on each side and just kind of watch and you can see what I mean by that. We're gonna start up near the, um, kind of the middle part of his body right here and kind of draw it out like that and bring it back down toward the bottom of his body near his front leg. And you see how it's kind of like the shape of a half of a heart or kind of like an oval where you don't see the other side of the oval. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so there's one leg, two legs. And we're going to add his webbed feet again at the bottom. And those are just kind of three little kind of circles that stick out there on the end. And do the same thing to the other side. All right, he's starting to look more and more like a frog. Next, we need to give him a mouth. And I'm going to draw a big smile right underneath his eyes. And since he's a frog, he's probably going to have his tongue sticking out so he can catch some flies to eat. So draw his tongue coming out of his mouth there. All right, everybody with me so far? Good. All right, 
Now we're going to draw his crown. Of course, that crown's gonna be on top of his head. We're gonna start by drawing two vertical lines or two lines that go up and down. We're gonna start on one side of his head and just go up just a little bit. You don't wanna go all the way up to the top of your page. You don't want it to touch. And then we're gonna draw the other one on the other side. And then we're going to draw some points, like the points of his crown from one side to the other. And then to make it look more like a crown, we're going to add some circles on top. Just like that. Now, oh, one thing I forgot to tell you, tell you friends, is on his legs that we drew on the sides, we're gonna draw a short little line on each side to kind of give his legs a little more definition. Now we're gonna add some spots to our frog. So just draw some circles on your frog. They can be big circles or small circles. And make sure you draw some on his legs. Again, they can be big or small. And you could even do what I've done and draw some circles that it looks like you only see half of the circle you can do that as well and just make sure that you get circles and spots in different places I think I need to put one right here all right friends it's really starting to look like a frog and I think that's it for him but we do need to draw the lily pad that he's sitting on and we're going to start over on the, the left side and we are going to just basically draw a curve line, kind of squiggly, to the other side. And we're gonna bring it kind of to a point. And then we're going to, from there, draw another line, kind of making a V and circling it back to your frog's leg to make it look like the little lily pad. All right, friends, so we're almost finished with our drawing. Since he's sitting on a lily pad, that must mean he's in the water. So in the background behind our frog, we're going to draw some waves, like a wavy line, like it's waves in the water. And chances are our frog is probably near a pond or on a pond. So I don't know about you, but if you've ever been to a pond, you sometimes you see a lot of different plants and things around. And one of those things is a cattail. And I'm gonna draw a few cattails on my drawing. I always thought that cattails kind of look like corn dogs and so I'm going to draw like a small little oval shape like that and then I'm just going to draw a line through it starting right above the top down into the water and I'm going to do a few more of those and of course those are going to be my cattails you can have some short ones you can have some tall ones but just draw a few on each side. All right, our drawing is complete. Now it's time to color it in. Now, of course, if you don't have any watercolors at home, you can just fill it in with your crayons. And we are going to use crayons on some of our frog. But again, like I said, if you don't have um, watercolors at home, you can finish it out just with all crayons, or you can use markers or color pencils, whatever you wanna use to, to finish it with. But we're going to um, color a few spots on our frog. We're going to start with, um, well, you can start anywhere, but we're going to color our crown. And I think I'm going to color my frog's crown yellow. Also, what I want you to do is color his tongue with a crayon. I'm going to use red. And then color your cattails. Now, most of the cattails I've seen are brown. So I'm going to fill those in with a brown crayon.
And the last thing that I want you to use your crayon for is his spots. And you can color those whatever color you want. You can make them all one color, or you can do them different colors like I did on my example here. Now, I would not use green just because you're going to use green to color your frog. So let's go ahead and fill in our circles. Alright friends, now there's one thing that I did forget to add to my drawing and I want to go back and do that now and if you have room you can do it but if not that's okay. Since my frog has his tongue sticking out and he's waiting for some flies to come along, I'm going to draw a little fly on my page here and I'm going to put it up here to the side and just for my fly I'm just going to draw a little black dot like that and just give it two little circles kind of for the wings. Maybe give it some antennae maybe or something. Maybe it's not a fly, maybe it's a little bug. And then I'm just going to kind of draw some dots like it's been flying around. Just like that. And there's one last thing actually that I want you to color. And that is I want you to take your white crayon and I want you to color the wings on that fly. And then I want you to color the white parts of your frog's eye. And I know you really can't see it all that well, but if we're going to use watercolors, it's kind of important to do that step. That way, if our watercolors gets over into our frog's eye, it's not really going to color his eye a different color because the wax from the crayon is going to kind of seal it. All right, friends. Once you've got everything colored in, or at least as much as you're going to color in with the crayons, it's time to paint. And actually there's not a whole lot of painting to do, at least using a bunch of different colors, at least on my part. Again, this is your picture, so you can use whatever colors you want. But I'm going to basically, since I have my green frog, my green lily pad, my water, and my sky, I'm basically going to stick with using some blues and some greens. And I'm going to bring my watercolors to the side here to make it easier for me to find. I'm going to take my pipette that I have here, get my water handy, and get some of that in my pipette and just drop it onto my watercolors. And since I'm mainly sticking with blues and greens, I'm also going to use some yellow because, of course, yellow and blue together make green. So I'm going to add some to my yellow too. And again, if you don't have a pipette, you can just use a little spoon. And the first thing that I want to do, I want to color or paint in my sky. And I'm going to use just this regular blue that is in my watercolor set here. And All right, friends, after you get your sky painted, we will go ahead and we will paint our frog. That way it gives our sky a little bit of time to dry before we paint our water. So just rinse off your brush and your water. And since we're gonna have two things that are green, our frog and our lily pad, we want to try to make those different colors, different shades of green. And so I'm going to use some of my green that I have here in my palette. I'm going to pick some of it up and I'm going to bring it over to my palette here that I'm using. Get enough of it on there. Might take a little bit of time to do that, but that's okay. You don't need to be in a hurry or in a rush. Now what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of yellow to that green that I've just put on my palette. And that's just going to change the, 
color a little bit. It's kind of lighter. And that's what I'm going to use to paint my frog here. All right, friends, after you get your frog painted, it's time to start on your lily pad. And I think for this, I'm just going to use the green that's on my kit right here. Now it's time to paint your water. And I want my water to be a different color than my sky. So this time I'm going to take my blue, but I'm going to add some green to it. And again, I'm going to use my palette here. Pick up lots of blue. And you can use your paper plate again or just mix it on your paper by doing a little, little bit of each color at a time until you have the color that you want. Now I'm going to add some green. And mix it in. Let me test it out and see what it looks like. I want to add a little bit more blue. I'm just going to clean my brush out and get some more blue. And it's okay where I painted on my picture because it's still wet, so I can still take my brush and paint over it. So now I have this kind of greenish blue color. What color would you call it? After you've painted your water, your picture is complete. Just be sure to give it plenty of time to dry. I hope you've enjoyed making this project with me today. And at the library, we would love to see some pictures of your, of your work. So please send a message to our Facebook page and we'll share the pictures on our page and give everybody a chance to look at your wonderful creations. Until next time, bye friends.